Hey, beautiful people of the World Wide Web. My name is Ryan, and if you haven't heard about the new drama surrounding Harper Lee's new book, we haven't been able to say those four words in nearly 50 years, then you've probably built your existence underneath a rock the size of the moon, approximately. The book is called Go Set a Watchman, and everybody basically wants to know three things. What's the deal with the book's kind of shady release? Will it change the way that I read To Kill a Mockingbird? And should I read it? Disclaimer, there are no spoilers in this video. Uh, I totally respect each of your individual reading experiences and I don't want to ruin that for any of you because I hate when that happens for me. But if you want to be able to participate in cocktail party conversations about the book, or you want to know what all the drama is about, or whether or not you should read it, or if you want to engage with it more effectively, more critically, keep watching. Okay, so how are we just getting this book now in 2015? In 1964, Harper Lee, that's a pen name actually, her name is Nell Harper Lee, gave her last interview and she's been living out of the public eye ever since. She has repeatedly said that she would never ever publish another book. And yet somehow here we are. If you're hoping that Harper Lee just up and decided to write a new book, go to her publisher or her agent and do the deed, then you're going to be a little bit disappointed. The disturbing truth is that she was much more passive than that in the process. And for good reason. Uh, she's 89 years old and living in assisted care. Instead, the story, or at least one of the versions, of how we came to get this book goes like this. The typed manuscript of Ghost of the Watchmen is found in a safe deposit box of Nell Harper Lee's in either 2011 or 2014. And the reason there are two different stories with three years between them is way too complex to go into here, but yeah, sketchy. But the manuscript makes its way from Lee's lawyer to her agent and finally to Harper Collins, who's publishing the book. Now, that in itself doesn't sound too condemning until we take into account the awkward timing. Harper Lee's sister, Alice, was her caretaker of sorts. She was her lawyer at one point. And then all of a sudden, within three months of Alice's death, we have announcement of a new book. That quick turnaround left a lot of people questioning the legality of what was going on, whether or not she was getting jerked around by her lawyer or by someone close to her, and so the state of Alabama got involved. Long story short, they met with Harper Lee and conducted an investigation and concluded that she was not getting duped and that she was making her own decisions, but some people are still skeptical. Regardless of what we learn from the actual book, which trust me has plenty to teach us, we can also learn something about Watchmen's route through the dusty years and tangled corridors of publication. Okay, but so what is the book about? And how does it change the way that we see her other slightly famous book? In 1960, when To Kill a Mockingbird was released to immediate, incredible success, Harper Lee told everyone that that was her first book, which was true. But Ghost of the Watchmen is also her first novel, so... How does that happen? They can't both be her first novel. Except they kind of can. They are. Here's how the story goes. When Harper Lee first set out to write a book about racism in the South, as a 29, 30-year-old woman living in New York City, she wrote Go Set a Watchman about being 20-something and coming home to your hometown with occasional flashbacks to her childhood. However, that is not what she ended up publishing because she spent three years working on taking these characters down a different storyline, all childhood, all flashback, if you will. And that is the masterpiece that we know as To Kill a Mockingbird, released in 1964. So yeah, it's true that Ghost of the Watchmen is the first draft of To Kill a Mockingbird, but they're also different novels. Mockingbird follows one plotline, Watchmen follows another. Mockingbird has certain characters, Watchmen has mostly the same characters reimagined, or I guess prior imagined. So if you're asking how will this affect my reading of To Kill a Mockingbird, one answer is that it's going to give you more insight into the characters that you already love. The other answer to every potential reader who says, because it seems like all of Twitter is saying it, if Atticus is a racist, then I just can't deal with this book. I have news for you that might be hard to hear. The Atticus Finch of Ghost at a Watchman is certainly less unequivocally good, and therefore less easy to digest. But the people you meet in this world are also less unequivocally good, or unequivocally bad, or outright heroes, or outright villains. And if you can learn to see the characters of this book or the people in your life as full spectrum humans, as the grand sum total of their good and bad parts, if Nell Harper Lee can teach you that, then life is going to be a little bit easier. And that brings us to our final question, should I read it? Yes, give this book a chance to teach you. Is this book, is this book, mo is this book most certainly a draft? Yes, the prose is soaring at times and in need of revision at others. But the story functions, and it's got Harper Lee's wit on every page. Is the book most certainly being released under slightly sketchy circumstances? 
Yes, and we should keep our ears to the ground for future signs of any author mistreatment. But so far we've got evidence that this is what Harper Lee wanted. Is the book most certainly going to change the way that you see To Kill a Mockingbird and the characters of that book? Yes. And that can be frightening, especially when the characters have been in the canon for 50 years. But I also think it's a good thing when we have to start reconciling the good and the bad parts of complex, nuanced characters because that matches real life. Okay, so in the end, I can't wholeheartedly say that this book doesn't have its problems, but I can, without a doubt, say go to a bookstore and buy Go Set a Watchman. Then read it, obviously. Go to a bookstore. Go Set a Watchman. That was clever, right? Alrighty, that's all I've got. Uh, if you were here just for the book review, I you should check out my channel, because I also do cool things on video sometimes and post it on YouTube every Sunday. So. Best wishes! Disclaimer, I've got some major mouth pain, and so I'm sorry if I sound a little weird slash don't move my mouth very much. Talking is hard. Disclaimer squared, I swear this video is in no way a promotion of Walk the Moon, but you wouldn't not be not stupid to check them out. Yeah. Behind the scenes secret, I actually already lent out my copy of Ghost of the Watchmen, and so I had to find a book that would fit the cover, so I used Beautiful Ruins by Jess Walter. So, I'm a poser.